Hi everybody and welcome back to my backyard once again. Today is a super warm winter day, finally, I'm almost hot. And I'm gonna be talking about an already opened box. <laughs> you can already start seeing what's inside. And I had this for six months, but I wouldn't talk about it because this is a pre-production unit of a product that just came out and now I'm allowed to talk about it. So, this is from a company called DDI, Drone Design International. And if you are a veteran of this channel, you may remember this drone because I already talked about it about one year and a half ago. At the time, it was just a project, no company. But now they are a startup here in Italy. They are producing bind and fly drones. And I'm very, very, very excited to tell you all about it. But before I do that, please remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Let me know if you are a veteran and you remember this drone specifically. What do you think about it? And as always, if you are curious about the project, also please follow them and uh, just go see what they are planning because it's very, very clever stuff. Links in the description down below. Let's go. And boom, take a look at this beautiful drone. This is the DDI product and it's been designed by Marco Perissinotto which is also the founder of the company and very cool story about him he was working as a designer for a very famous luxury car brand in Italy and he quit his job and decided to follow his passion and design drones so he started DDI and this drone is very very well designed the ducks are, have been designed with um, uh, fluid dynamic simulation for example all the models you see are super complex super nice look at these <laughs> dampeners. It's sick looking and the best thing of all, everything can be 3D printed. So you can upgrade every piece whenever you like. If you have a 3D printer, you can buy from the company, of course, they 3D print their own pieces. The 3D print quality is pretty top notch. I have to say, look at these dampeners. I can never <laughs> print this with this much quality. Very, very nice. And his vision for this drone basically is to make a uh, super modular drone, which you, everybody can find their use. So if you want to fly indoors, there is a duct for that. If you want to fly outdoors, there is a duct for that. There are different materials. Everything can be customized, can be changed. And also they offer very premium um, tuning on this drone. So depending on your use, you just put the right tuning in and it flies perfectly. And another key aspect of their vision is to make it easy for beginners as well. So basically you can buy the bind and fly version and just fly it but also you can build it your own DIY and they are making videos so you can follow them and learn everything about how to build it and how to fly FPV and also they're gonna su provide support from Italy repair pieces of course if you break a motor or something you can order from them but also if you break your drone send it back to the company they're gonna fix it and ship it back to you you don't need to ship it to China if you live in Europe this is great it takes so much less time to do so so it's a great point to start as a beginner as well and it's finally time to talk about specs. So the drone I have in my hands is a pre-production again. So the components on here are different from the one which is going to be shipped. So I'm going to be talking about those components and not the one on here. First of all, it's 105 millimeter motor to motor. You can get it in analog and in uh, HD version with Nebula Pro basically. And the analog version is going to weigh about 145 grams. The HD one is going to weigh 151, something like that. Um, the carbon 3 millimeter and it's water jet cut which they say is going to improve a lot of the durability because um, the one with the mill is going to basically hit the carbon and make it like glass so it's brittle the water jet is cold and uh, it preserves the properties of the carbon so it's better there is also a 2 millimeter top plate for putting the camera on and of course there is a wide selection of dampeners you can use a standard silicone ones or you can use these 3d printed ones and there are of different stiffness and probably you can also put a full gopro on this drone <laughs> i don't know if i'm gonna be testing that but if you use the stiff ones you can do that as well which is crazy the propellers on this drone are gemfan d63 three bladed they figure these are the best ones and the motors are gonna be 1404 3800 kV from T motor and the flight controller all in one is a uh, F7 flight controller from Foxir with 45 amps ESCs, 6S, and they already installed Blue J into this. So you also have the RPM filtering and everything. So it flies very, very, very nice. As receiver options, you can get Express LRS, uh, Crossfire, or the DJI integrated receiver in the Cadex Vista. 
But the real beauty about this drone is the 3D printed aspect of it, because it makes it fully, fully modular. You can select a different combination of ducks. If you fly in the open, if you fly indoors, if you want to do more freestyle, you can select different camera mounts, material and colors. And if you have a 3D printer, even better. You can experiment yourself on the website. There are uh, free STL files you can download and change your own styles. So just look at this. Basically, you have um, PLA ducks, which are more stiff, flies better, but they are a little bit more brittle. If you are a total beginner, you can use a uh, TPU one, which is going to be more forgiving, but less stiff. There are very, very lightweight materials you can try. And also there is a huge selection of camera mounts. There is GoPro 10, GoPro 6, there is GoPro 8, there is Insta360, uh, which is this, Go2. And it's just amazing. Also, there are fixed mounts swivable mounts that use the same uh, type of uh, connection the full gopro use so you can use full gopros and it will probably carry it maybe indoors it will not be nimble with it but you can carry it and also once you buy it you have access to a free library of stls you can download and change your drones if there are updates to something you can download them and print them you can always buy them from the company and also if you design something on your own you can submit it to them and they're gonna add it to the library so it's very cool it's also a community project and they are looking for feedback they are looking for ideas so they can make the best product they can and boom i'm ready to fly i just put the camera with the swivel mount the 650 4s battery and let's try it so <laughs> i flew with it a while back oh wow <laughs> that was <laughs> pretty bad so I just crashed and what I believe happened when I was reapplying throttle, a propeller exploded and maybe also the next one to it exploded as well and I lost the propellers. That's it. The crash didn't break the drone or anything. Like this, TPU, this uh, PLA is really strong. I'm going to change the props. I don't know if I have the same ones and try again. Okay, so I didn't have exact spares of the Gemfan D63, but I found these uh, bull nose propellers from iFlight. They are three bladed. Let's try. The drone, of course, is not, uh, <laughs> is not tuned for this propeller. So let's see how it flies. Yeah, oh. yeah it's not tuned for these propellers at all. You can hear it fluttering. It's a shame because I tried this drone and it was flying very good. And, st and still is, but yeah, there is a little bit of fluttering, of course. It's very, very, very specifically filtered and tuned for those other propellers and it doesn't like when you change them. You need to change tuning probably. But still, it's flying. This is of course for demonstration purposes. This is totally different hardware from the one you're gonna get. So there is not much point. But you can hear how it sounds, how it moves and it's a very very good flyer once it's well tuned and of course it's a drone for tinkerers in my opinion if you don't like tinkering this is not your drone but if you like tinkering this is amazing it's like a lego project you have to change ducks change tunings and stuff until you find what you like and then your code is perfect it's tailored on you Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> the propellers are not the right ones and it's um, not very efficient <laughs> as well. I see that D is, is fighting a lot against these propellers. Probably the motors are going to be a little bit hot, but you can see it's, it's flying good. There is a little bit of vibration of fluttering. But imagine with the good props and with the filtering. Last time I tried the analog version of it, it was super light and that drone was flying fantastically. Digital is a little bit heavier and this particular drone I have is a little bit heavier than the uh, production one. Different components, double stack, 
bigger motors. You should definitely check the production one, but it's good. Uh, the fluttering, you can hear it. Yeah, but it's, it's fine. The battery is sagging a bit because it's consuming a lot of amps. 14 volts right now, it's just sagging, but probably I have to come for a landing, yes. Three minutes of flying. Oh, oh no! Okay, <laughs> got it. So yeah, the motors are a little bit warm, but of course you heard it fluttering and the filtering is not made for these propellers, so don't expect it to, to work super good. It still flew great, had a little bit of wobble, didn't sound super clean. With the Gemfan D63, it flew so clean. I flew for about a month with this drone and it was super efficient, clean, and flew agro very, very well. But I don't know, maybe I hit something and the propellers were cracked and they just exploded back there. So I'm sorry, I don't have <laughs> replacement ones. But anyway, the drone you're gonna get when you get the bind and flight is gonna be super well tuned. It's gonna have the propellers and it's gonna be lighter than this one. Also, this one has um, 1206 motors. They are not very good for 2.5 inches because uh, Beta FPV use them and they are super tall, so they produce more vibrations. If you use 1404, which the new ones uses, so much better, flies so much smoother. It's, uh, it's just better. Final opinion about the DDI Pro Duct. Of course, what I have in my hand is a pre-production unit used for testing. I offered some of my testing to the company to develop a better product, but this is not refined. This, is da this does not reflect the real product. I hope to try that soon and to sh really show you what it can do. And, but I can talk about the vision and the vibe of this drone. So, who is this drone for? Of course, in my opinion, again, it's for tinkerers. If you like tinkering in FPV, if you like trying different stuff until you really meet your needs, <laughs> it's exploding bean season again, <laughs> and you just heard it. It's crazy. So, <laughs> now I'm scared. So, if you wanna try out stuff until it's tailor-made of your needs, this is the right platform, because you can change pretty much anything except from the carbon plate down here, which is not bad. And also the company doesn't want to make V1, V2, V3. They just want to upgrade all the 3D printed parts so you can follow up on the progress of this platform. And if you don't want to deal with the modularity aspect of it, you can just get the BNF. It's going to be very, very well tuned from factory and works amazing. If you break something, you can 3D print it yourself, get it online from third party services or uh, from the company itself. And if you break electronics, you can repair it yourself or send them to the company and get support and get it shipped back. I don't know in how much time, I guess a week, a couple of weeks. It's not like China, it's in Italy. And it's hard to find downsides because uh, I cannot say this drone is heavy because you can make it lighter, you can remove the ducts. One thing I can say, 3D printed plastic is a little bit heavier on average than um, injection molded. So this drone, to have the same level of um, sturdiness, it has to be heavier. But of course, if you don't crash, you can just remove the ducts. And yeah, it's, it's so modular, it's hard to find downsides. Maybe I don't like the Caddex Vista at the top. I wish it was here and put a battery, better space for the battery because it's a little bit crammed in, but that's about it. As a Cinewhoop, it works very good. It's soft mounted, it's just how I like cine whoops, so cannot find many faults with it. And as always, that's all for this review. Remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. I'm very curious about what do you think about this platform. And as always, check out the description and the links down below. Check out this company, even if you don't want to buy anything, check them out. Let them know what you think about it. If you have suggestions, give them, because they want to make a community around this project about a company that listens to customers, that's more at hand, it's in Europe, so it's not in China and they do whatever they want. They want to listen about what you have to say and make the changes you need. So check them out and stay safe and happy flying. Bye.